like it or not, Christmas is approaching and since all the Christmas lighting has started appearing on the shelves at places like Jack's Stores and Ramsey, I thought I'd buy some. Now, I think this is this year's stock. It could be left over from last year, but the Isle of Man loves its Christmas lights because the general environment in the Isle of Man is pretty dark, so they look fantastic in the garden. So they always sell out of Christmas lights. So I think this is new stock. Let's take a look. And you might think, well, you've featured Christmas lights before. Yes, I have. But I like to see how things evolve. I like to see how the colours and phosphors evolve. And I like to see how the control systems evolve. So for a start, you're getting a fairly nice little battery pack. Now I'm wondering, they've got smaller sets. I'm wondering if they contain the same battery pack. It's, it's got a proper seal and it seems waterproof. Hmm, okay. Let's stick some batteries in. And then we shall whip this cover off and see if the circuitry has changed, if it's uh, still, what was it last year? Microcontroller, uh, an H-bridge driver. Right, I won't bother closing it. I will close it. I shall close it down and click it. Okay, that probably made a real loud pop in the microphone. <laughs> click. Yeah, it's the usual polarity inverting one. I'm going to unravel these and see how they're wired. It's just a parallel circuit. So this is the type that has uh, alternate polarity LEDs. And it swaps the polarity going out to the output. So if you put it through to the... Uh, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, new patterns. If you put it to the static setting, it's not actually static. I don't know if it's going to show in the camera. You can see a slight shimmer. It's actually alternating the polarity to the two channels to make them stay on. This is quite annoying because otherwise it'd be really nice just to, you know, use these with, say, a USB power supply. But if you do that, only every second LED will light. That could be useful. It means you could choose a string that's either just red and yellow or just green and blue. So let's see what the circuitry's like. This also has the ubiquitous timer that's in it. So combination, which is all the effects, in wave. Sequential, which is only two channels, so not that exciting. Slow glow, which is terrible. Chasing flash, it's all right. It's a very classic effect. Slow fade, also a bit shit. Uh, twinkle flash, that's the kind of new one. And steady on. Right, let's open it. So I shall put the batteries out. And we'll see what's inside. I can remember the first ones that these came out. They were terrible. They uh, tried to use the existing higher voltage lights and used a little boost circuit. And uh, it resulted in very short battery life and instability of circuitry. I shall zoom down this. Actually, I'll bring it up here and I shall zoom in. It's way out of focus. And then I shall focus on that. Boop. <clears throat> uh, what am I seeing? Not a lot. I don't see... I'm going to guess this is a single-sided circuit board. This chip... Capacitor, probably across the supply rails. Button. Um, and probably a crystal. For the accurate timing. Right, tell you what. I'm going to whip this circuit board out and we'll take a closer look at it. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. I shall zoom up a little bit. Uh, not an awful lot to see. The back of the circuit board, where is the circuit board? It's so small I've lost it. It's just a plain circuit board with the crystal in the back. Probably 32.768 kilohertz. Um, there is a chip. Now, whether this is a standard microcontroller and they're abusing two of the output pins because when an output pin is high, it goes positive, and when it's low, it goes negative. It's possible they could be abusing that but uh, to actually drive the LEDs directly. But I think this chip probably has a buffered output in those pins. I'm not sure what it is. It has a very standard sort of power uh, pin out here. But we have the negative coming on, and it goes to a capacitor. Positive coming on goes to a capacitor, and they go to the supply rails of the chip. There is a button that pulls a one pin to ground, and there is that crystal in the back, 32.768 kilohertz. And then there's the two outputs to the LEDs, and that's it. And they have added the provision here for a resistor to go in series to limit the current through the LEDs, but they've just bridged that out with copper at the back of that. It's just a sort of design option that they've blocked out. 
Right, so the schematic is not going to be very complicated. The schematic is going to look like this. There's the plus fire 4.5 volt rail of the batteries, which will drop gradually as the discharge. Here are the batteries. Three batteries in the series, double A's. We have the little capacitor, the decoupling capacitor, which goes straight across supply rails just to provide stability to the microcontroller. And then we have the microcontroller. Mysterious microcontroller, no number. Could it be a Paduk? And it has a, a connection to the positive rail. It has a connect connection to the negative rail. <clears throat> and then the outputs to the LEDs. LEDs. Keep in mind that some of them are in this polarity and some of them are in that polarity. So they can alternate as the uh, it switches the polarity to the output. The LEDs uh, alternate. Or for static, it just uh, alternates very quickly between them so that it gives that persistence of vision. It looks like they're lit continually. There is the button, which uh, is going from the chip to the zero volt rail. That means internally the chip, technically speaking, has a little pull-up resistor inside going to the positive rail and uh, when you push that button it pulls it to zero volts and that sort of changes the logic state to zero on that input and then it knows that something has happened and finally it has the crystal which looks a bit like this in a schematic um that is it it's one of the most simplest designs i've come across yet now let me uh, get the kink calculator and show you. Is this going to work? Hold on. On. Let's try this. 32768, which is the frequency of the crystal. Divided by 2 equals 16,384, 8,192. This is binary. 4,096, 2,048, 1,024, 512, 256, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. So that 32,768 actually divides down nicely in binary uh, to a 1 hertz time base. And uh, in this circuitry, they will be uh, dividing that again by 60, say, to get a 1 minute time base, then by 60 again to get a 1 hour time base, and then they'll be dividing it by 6 to get that six hour cycle, six hours on, 18 hours off. And then they'll probably be just counting a two bit binary counter because that will be when it's at zero, that will be the six hours on and then the, all the other states will be uh, off. It's very, it's almost boring, quite frankly. It's just so simple. They've stripped it to the bare minimum, <clears throat> but that is how it is. So, uh, yeah. The LEDs, because they've got them all in parallel, to match the intensities, they have used the... Well, I can actually power this up. This is where I blow all the LEDs up. I shall try not to blow all the LEDs up with the power supply. So I shall find the two LED connections. There they are. Ooh, that was a residual charge and capacitor that made them flash. And I shall gradually crank the voltage up but they have used phosphor-coated LEDs. They're all blue chips. The only ones that are raw blue chips are the blue LEDs. The green is phosphor, and the red and the yellow is phosphor. So at uh, 3 volts, is that roughly the intensity they were before? That's about 200 milliamps. Maybe that's close to what they were before. Yeah, about 100 milliamps. So I'm guessing the current will be limited by the output of that uh, chip. And when I swap the polarity here, uh, the green and blue are lighting one polarity. And when I swap it over to the other polarity, the red and yellows will light. And there they are at the other side, which makes these lights just that little bit harder to try. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to resolve a little circuit that just simply does basically a uh, H bridge drive with self feedback so you can actually drive string of these without having their dedicated controller because it's annoying when uh, it's got the it's built in features. But there we go, that is the current state of play with the Christmas lights. I have to say, I'm getting a slight deja vu. It makes me wonder if I've taken a very similar one apart. But um, that's what this one is. And to be honest, at that cost, it's actually worth getting just 
for things like the case, because that's a fairly good little waterproof case. Of course, I've not actually tested it, but it looks pretty robust. It really snugs that seal down when you click it shut. But there we go. Uh, this year's batch of lights, can't remember which brand that was. Which brand is it? Does it say? No, it's got tons of text on it. Self-import agencies. But the box looks like this. And they do various multiples of these uh, sets. They could do the sort of higher number sets, which uh, I think above a certain level, they switch to using the plug-in power supply. But uh, below that, uh, 96, I think it's 48 or something like that, they do uh, the battery-operated ones. But it's neat enough. It's a nice enough little set of lights.